Hello friends, welcome to 8th lecture of industrial instrumentation and today we will learn about some useful strain gauge circuits. So let's get started. Basically three uh, strain gauge circuits are used to uh, detect the results from the available strain gauge and uh, basically change in resistance could be easily measured with help of variation in voltage. For that purpose three circuits are used. First one is ballast circuit, second one is western bridge circuit and third one is potentiometer. But according to the scope of our subject we will study this uh, two circuits that is ballast circuit and western bridge circuit. So let us understand the concepts of ballast circuit. Ballast circuit is nothing but a simple uh, series combination of resistances. This ballast circuit will have a constant DC voltage source known as VI. Then in series with this DC uh, source there is a resistance whose magnitude is, will remain constant always and this resistance named as ballast resistance indicated by Rb. And again in series with this ballast resistance now we will connect our actual strain gauge. Strain gauge is uh, basically a resistive element so the resistance of this element will be indicated as uh, gauge resistance that means Rg okay so this resistance will uh, represent strain gauge. Now we are about to measure the output voltages at this terminal across the terminals of strain gauge and this output voltage will be indicated with help of Vo. So if you know simple voltage division rule then uh, equation of Vo can be given as Vo is equals to Rg divided by total resistance of series circuit that is Rb plus Rg and total input voltage okay so this is Vi. Now when the gauge is strained we can observe change in output voltage. So now we will have the equation for change in output voltage that is VO. So uh, we are actually uh, doing the differentiation of this first equation with the uh, sep separate quantities on left hand side we will uh, differentiate it with the help of output voltage and on the right hand side of the equation we will differentiate this equation with help of variable resistance and in our case the variable quantity of resistance is this that is gauge resistance Rg. So this equation will become Rb divided by Rb plus Rg whole square and multiplied with differentiation of gauge resistance into input voltage will be as it is. Now as you people know that in previous lecture I have already explained that we are ultimately interested in the magnitude of dr by r. Why? Because this uh, quantity will be helpful to find the magnitude of gauge factor and finally uh, we will deal with this quantity that is per unit change in resistance. So uh, for this equation we will uh, multiply and multiply and divide the magnitude of rg. So this equation will be like this rb into rg divided by rb plus rg square into drg will be as it is divided by rg. So here we multiplied and divide with help of rg itself. So equation will do not have any other effect rather than the multiplication and division and this uh, two resistances will be cancelled out okay. Simply we will put input voltage as it is. So now what we can say about this equation that finally this delta output voltage that means the change in output voltage can be written as delta vo is equals to Rb into Rg divided by Rb plus Rg whole square. Now this term that is drg by Rg that is nothing but if you uh, people know the formula of gauge factor this gauge factor is equals to dr by R that is the per unit change in resistance of gauge and divide by strain applied on this gauge. So this DL by L is nothing indicated with help of epsilon. So here we can put gauge factor 
into epsilon that is strain and again input voltage will be as it is. Now uh, for maximum sensitivity of a strain gauge we can put uh, or we can say that the, this both the resistances will have equal value. So if we put this condition for maximum sensitivity Rb will be equal to Rg. Okay, so that we can have maximum uh, change in output voltage. Finally, we can write this equation of uh, maximum change in output voltage as this uh, delta Vo is equals to Gf into epsilon divided by 4. Why? Because if we place this Rb is equals to Ig condition in this equation, then this term will become Rb square. I can write over here, this term will become Rb square and here 4 rb square okay so it will leave only 1 by 4 in this equation and finally this uh, term will be multiplied as it is with input voltage so this is the final equation of uh, output voltage maximum output voltage of ballast circuit now if we find the maximum sensitivity then in in this case sensitivity can be defined as sensitivity of this ballast circuit will be defined as the ratio of if we indicate this sensitivity with help of capital S then the sensitivity will become the ratio of maximum change in output voltage upon strain applied okay or we can say strain uh, observed by the strain gauge that is equals to gauge factor into epsilon divided by 4 epsilon into Vi. So this equation uh, will finally be 1 by 4 gauge factor into input voltage. So this is the final equation of maximum sensitivity of this ballast circuit. Now let us see some uh, useful points uh, regarding ballast circuit. In ballast circuit mainly the error uh, caused by circuit nonlinearity is very small and it is expected up to the strain measurements of 1000 microns. The disadvantage of this ballast circuit is that it exhibits some initial voltage under zero strain condition. So in ballast circuit we can uh, observe zero error. Okay. This is the one drawback of ne negative point of ballast circuit and this ballast circuit has to be balanced to a zero value to monitor the small variation of voltage appearing because of strain. So every time you are uh, using the ballast circuit for strain measurement then you need to calibrate the ballast circuit at zero value. And uh, again the drawbacks of this circuit can be eliminated by use of Western bridge circuit. So now uh, we will study in second stage we will study the Western bridge circuits which are used for strain measurement and that uh, particular circuits can easily eliminate the drawbacks of this ballast circuit. So I think you people do not have any queries regarding ballast circuit. You can uh, simply remember this ballast circuit as a series combination of a DC voltage source in series with the uh, ballast resistance in series with the gauge resistance and finally we will measure the output voltage across this terminal so on this terminals we will measure or we can say that the across two terminals of the strain gauge we can measure the output voltage and uh, this uh, change in output voltage will be proportional to the change in resistance and this will be proportional to the applied stress Okay, so this way you can measure the amount of force or stress applied on the strain gauge with help of ballast circuit. So let us move to the next topic that is Western Bridge circuit. Okay, so now we will study about the Western Bridge circuits which are used for strain measurement purpose. So there are basically three variants of this Western Bridge circuit. If you are using only one strain gauge, then uh, you can say that this configuration is a quarter bridge configuration. If there are two strain gauges are used then you can say that this is a half bridge configuration and if you are using four active strain gauges that means on all uh, four, four arms of the western bridge if you are using all four strain gauges then you can say that this is a full bridge configuration. But in this uh, session, we will uh, take a look at 
a short introduction about the Western Bridge circuit. And then finally, in next video session, we will look uh, for the detailed elaboration of this all quarter bridge, half bridge, and full bridge configuration for strain measurement purpose. Now, I think you all people know the setup of or configuration of Western Bridge. Western Bridge is a simply setup of four resistances connected in loop manner. On any two opposite terminals, you can connect input voltage source, input DC voltage source, always indicated with help of VI. And on opposite terminals, we will have output. For a strain measurement purpose, uh, basically galvanometer is connected on this terminals, but here we are more concerned about the magnitude of output voltage. That's why we will find the equation that will represent, it, represent finally the uh, nature of output voltage. For that purpose, we need to consider the nodes inside of this Western Bridge first. Let's say this is node A, this is node B, this is uh, node C and this is D. Resistance R1, resistance R2, resistance R3, and this is resistance R4. Normally, in bridge balance condition, opposite resistances, uh, multiplication of opposite resistances uh, will be equal to each other. So, uh, we can say that under the balance condition, that means if applied force or stress is zero, in under that condition, R1 into R3 must be equal to R2 into R4, okay. So now we will begin to uh, derive the expression for uh, output voltage, okay. So in this case, output voltage, it is nothing but the difference of voltage between uh, B point and D point, okay. So this can be easily uh, expressed as, if we take A point as a reference, then VBA minus VDA is the is our output voltage. Simply, uh, you can uh, say, see that here in this circuit, one current will flow from this branch and another current will flow from this branch. Uh, first, in case of I1, let's say, current will flow from uh, A, B, and C. And in case of I2, current will flow from A, B, and C points. So, in parallel circuit, as we all know that the uh, voltages will be same, but if we want, want to find this particular voltage, then we need to apply voltage division rule, okay. So, under that condition, uh, under that condition, this uh, voltages can be represented as V in, that is the input voltage, into R1 divided by R1 plus R2 will give us the magnitude of VBA minus we can keep a V in as a common term, R4 minus R4 divided by R3 plus R4 will give us the magnitude of VDA. So this is the general equation in case of uh, output voltage. But now what if we are applying the uh, force on the strain gauge and we can observe the change in all these four resistances. Under that condition, this output voltage V out can be written as See, if we do not apply any external force, then R1 will remain same, okay. We cannot uh, observe any change in magnitude of R1. But if we are applying any external force, if the stress is experienced by strain gauge, then the value of R1 will be changed by this factor that now it will become R1 plus delta R1 or R1 minus delta R1. It will depend on the nature of stress or uh, force that is applied on the strain gauge. So similarly, uh, for all the four resistances, if uh, actual R2 is the resistance, then it can be changed by factor delta R2. If R3 is the original resistance, then it can have this effect. So finally, it will be represented as R3 plus delta R3. If this is the resistance R4, then final resistance will become R4 plus delta R4 after applying some external force. So under that condition, equation of output voltage will become V in into bracket, all these resistances will be added with the uh, change in resistance. That means the delta of that resistance, okay.
divided by we can keep the same term R1 plus delta R1 plus R2 plus delta R2 into R3 plus delta R3 plus R4 plus delta R4. So this will be the equation in case of output voltage if we apply any external force. Now if we neglect the second order nonlinearity, uh, then this equation can be simplified in this manner, V out that is equals to V in delta R1 by R1 minus delta R2 by R2 plus delta R3 by R3 minus Now let us consider ratio of R1 and R2 that is equals to ratio of R3 and R4 that is equal to some constant term that is P. So this equation of output voltage will become V in delta R1 by R1 minus delta R2 by R2 plus delta R3 by R3 minus delta R4 by R4 into P divided by 1 plus P whole square. So this is the our output voltage equation if we neglect the second order non-linearity. Okay. Now you people know uh, in place of R, delta R1 by R1 what we can put. So this equation will be V in into bracket our term P divided by 1 plus P whole square will remain as it is into bracket G1 epsilon 1 minus G2 epsilon 2 plus G3 as uh, see here G1, G2 and G3 is nothing but the different gauge factors of all the four active gauges minus G4, E4. So this is the final output equation in case of Western Bridge. If we use all the four active gauges inside of Western Bridge configuration. Now in next video lecture, we will see quarter bridge configuration, half bridge configuration and full bridge configuration. Thank you for watching the video.